that's what I'm yeah, my mind. All right, right everyone. So. I'm going to begin with the president's report. I want to begin by wishing Mr. McCarthy a happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you for spending your birthday night with us. You can spend it with anyone else. <laughs> anyone else. I assume you're going to say that regular session too, aren't you? Guys? That's it. It's a workshop. Downstairs, I'll mention regular. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to remind the board that during our August 13th meeting, or at our August 13th meeting, we'll, we will begin at 6.15 exec, okay? Just a reminder. And that completes my report. We will move on to the superintendent's report. Okay, I'm going to save my report for regular, where we'll be recognizing a staff member. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do have a presentation uh, to report out tonight on, and it's the student safety data report, so I'll move right into that. Um, twice a year, uh, we are required to report out to the Board of Education the student safety data report, which includes our HIB incidents and other uh, student safety data elements. So you are... Um, this is Conway, you could present that display that if you have it. Okay. So the first on the first page you are looking at the HIB incidents from January 23 to June 23 in the left column of data. And in the rightmost column you have this January 24 to June 24 as a comparison. So we had 19 total confirmed HIBs this spring semester as compared to last year, the same span of time, 24 confirmed HIBs. And then you see them there below you broken down by the nature of the incident, meaning what motivated the incident. The incident was motivated by race or religion or ancestry. And you see that breakdown there. And then below that, you see a chart of the way the incident was carried out. The, if it was a gesture, if it was written, verbal, physical, or electronic. Okay, moving on to the second page, you see this is the same time periods, again, towards the left. There are three columns from last year comparing to three columns this year. We must report out how many investigations were initiated, how many were completed in 10 days, which you'll see those two columns will match because we do follow that timeline very strictly, and then how many were actually affirmed HIPs. So we may have done six, in, if you look across at the, and it's then, then broken out by school. So if you follow just across the high school, last year from January to June, we initiated 27 investigations that led to seven affirmed HIPs. This year, we had six investigations and four affirmed HIPs at the high school. And you see it goes down the middle school this year. We did 16 investigations, nine confirmed HIPs there. I'll just break that down. The district total for this portion of this year was 32 investigations, 19 affirmed HIPs. Okay, that completes the HIP portion of this report. And then if you go down to the last table, we will see additional student safety data elements that must be reported out. These are incidents of violence for the entire school year. We're no longer just focusing in on the January to June. We're looking at the whole school year. We're looking at 22-23 compared to 23-24. Incidents of violence, which you will see are listed there in parentheses, the different types of infractions that are counted as violence. We had 29 last year, 30 this year, district-wide incidents of vandalism. Again, you see the infractions listed there in parentheses. Two last year, five this year. Weapons last year was nine. This year was two. Substance either, and you see in parentheses, use or possession or sale distribution. Last year we had 11, this year 18. And then you see the total HIBs, 38 last year for the whole year, and 30 for this year for the whole year. Okay, so that is that is the report. Okay, Mr. Weinstein. I was just wondering, what's the conclusion? Like, I don't know what the statistical yeah. Yeah. 
so, so the conclusion is obviously the first thing that really jumps out is substance abuse. And I do think that we took a harder stance. I'm not saying that we didn't take a hard stance last year, but I think we were honed in on, we had, we noticed early on some real concern with some students who were facing real addiction. Um, and we worked through, you know, all of the different methods, including violations of code of conduct and the consequences for that to, to try and address the issues. Um, you're seeing here the, the count of incidents. What you have not seen here tonight are all of the interventions that we put in place around that. So certainly we take, we walk away from this saying, we need to do more here and we want to do more. We, we partnered last year with the Department of Human Services who earned a, a grant through um, settlement funds for the opioid crisis. And we brought in different speakers. We brought in um, early prevention assessments that we could do on students to determine their level and their level of addiction and what type of intervention they might need. So we definitely want to try and continue those um, interventions as well and improve any other preventative programming that we can around it. Um, you know, happy to see some of the decline that we see there, but, but just one year compared to another year in, in itself doesn't do it. I think across the board, I mentioned this last year, we have begun working on interventions around discipline. A student, there's a behavior and, you know, maybe there has been discipline in the past and then you just move on and wait for it to happen again and then they're disciplined again, but we are working to develop and we started last year a tiered intervention system to behaviors, much like we do very well around academics. We diagnose an academic learning gap in a student and we absolutely know how to intervene on that. We are working to be better practitioners at intervening when we see behaviors that are concerning. And so providing interventions to try and turn <coughs> around behaviors, change behaviors and, and, and push a student to better choices um, rather than simply providing a consequence for the day. Okay, anyone else? Mr. Schneider? Uh, Mrs. Weldon, my question was around, uh, like this, these are the number of incidents, but is that reflective? Is there a lot of frequent flyers that impact like the same type of kids that, that are identified either a hit or a violence or drug use? Or is there a lot of kids that are overlapping or is it kind of unique? That answer is a little different for each category. Each category. Um, but around substance, we have had some recidivism, which is um, what I was mentioning earlier, that we, we found that to be concerning and we were trying to sort of increase and enhance our approach to that intervention um, and to reach out to other county resources beyond what we have here in town as, as resources for our students for who may need intensive outpatient therapy or who may need some addiction services. Um, and we were successful with some of that this year, reaching out to other agencies for support. Mr. McCarthy? Um, what, one of my favorite papers on uh, data analysis is called The Folly of Rewarding A While Hoping for B. And the whole center of the paper is about how we kind of put ourselves in predicaments with the information age of not um, rewarding the right behaviors. Um, and so a great example of this is what we see here, right? We see an increase in numbers uh, and we, uh, many people immediately jump to the conclusion, oh, that must mean that there are issues in that school district. When I, when I would actually argue that the beauty of this is that it shows that we are confronting these issues head on. We're not in the business of hiding from them. We're going to hit them head on the way Spartans always do, and we're going to deal with them. I think that's a wonderful thing. And I think a lot of parents tend to hear or read these statistics and they, they immediately assume, oh, that must mean there are problems. Uh, and instead, I view this as something that says, hey, our administration, our school district is, is getting in front of these problems and trying to deal with them in the best way possible. So I, I think it's good to see this. I, I know that our administration and our teachers are not out on a, uh, a witch hunt, if you will, um, but it's good to see that you guys are confronting these things. I think it's a, a, a positive for our district. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? No? Okay. Thank you. Oh, I do want to say, I, oh, I do want to say one thing. Right. You know, when you go from 27 to six, right, mm -hmm. um, high school, I mean, one of the things and that the hips. One, yeah, one of the mm -hmm. things that's been kind of discussed a lot is, uh, well, it's it's not 
Well, there's HIVs that have been confirmed HIVs, but then, you know, there's a lot of things that were mm -hmm. going on which probably weren't good situations mm -hmm. also, right? So, mm -hmm. so the 27 to 6, mm -hmm. um, what can you, you know what that's, um, you, I mean, I know we have somebody that's new as part of the, um, this, you know, it, like he's a vice principal of discipline, yeah. right? And is there anything going on with that? Or I that, think that, I, I can't say for sure that that has an impact, has, does or does not have an impact. Um, we've had, you know, over the last six years, we have three assistant principals that are newer in their roles and, you know, come up. Um, but I don't, I don't know that that's necess necessarily it. I think, I think the steps we take away from the COVID years, we find that the students <laughs> and the school re moves back towards more um, decorum and professionalism or uh, appropriate behaviors away from the time where sort of there were no rules, you're home, you're disconnected, you're, we're, we're remote. And we've noticed that each year things, everyone is sort of getting back into the routines of school. Um, and, and some of that conflict and mental health crises that we talk about that we're seeing we felt that last year. And a lot of those 27 things were not hid, but may have very well been something else. Okay. It may have been another type of infraction. So, you know, I think it's improving. I think the overall feeling, not, not talking about data for a minute, but the overall feeling is that things are improving. However, we still have some serious situations that need direct attention. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Does that conclude the path? Okay. Uh, school business administrator's report, Mr. Hastings. Thank you, Madam President. Um, just a couple of quick updates. Uh, roofing projects at both Dow and Wayside are continuing. We're making good progress on getting those uh, wrapped up and moving forward. Uh, there's a payment to the vendor on the uh, bills list tonight for approval, representing 50% completion at the uh, Wayside is about 25% completion at um, Dow. However, they have moved uh, further along uh, in their uh, progress. So uh, we haven't had much time downtime for bad weather. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that uh, we continue to have that luck. Uh, last week, uh, the contractor came out to start the field lighting project at the high school. Uh, they run conduit under the field in between the poles um, to uh, rewire uh, the new lighting. And if you recall, we had two feeds, one going from the building, the high school building to the uh, visitor side, and one um, from the pole uh, to the home side. Uh, the uh, crew spent some time uh, last summer uh, making repairs to that line that was buried between the high school and the visitor side. That's why we're putting in the conduit to go under the field. Uh, there's a change order you'll see on the agenda tonight for about $3,800 to run an extra piece of conduit. Um, without getting too far into the details, we're running that extra piece uh, to power uh, the other uh, lower grade lighting systems that are on the visitor side, the van shell and the uh, lights under the stands uh, for those sorts of things uh, because we have had some problems with that very one. So. We thought this was a good time to do it. They had all the equipment. So we wanted to go ahead and, and make that adjustment. Um, we had uh, delivery of the anchors and they've begun digging the holes for those anchors for the new poles. They've marked out the new poles. Uh, so we hope next week they'll start sinking those and uh, we'll be ready for our uh, early September home game against Homedale. So that'll be exciting. Um, and then finally, uh, we have been notified by the playground people uh, that early weeks of August, the first week, uh, hopefully, they'll be out to start pouring rubberized surfaces for the preschool playgrounds at both uh, Wayside and Dow. So uh, projects are coming together and we're making progress. Uh, but again, as always, a race against the clock to that September 1st uh, date to, to make sure everything's buttoned up and done. But, um, we did have a walkthrough today with the uh, County Business Administrator. Uh, she came out to look at some waivers we had in place for uh, some bathrooms uh, where students would go to the hallway bathrooms instead of the classroom <coughs> bathroom. And 
we went to all three elementaries and the custodians are working very hard uh, around the activities that are going on there. Uh, floors are already stripped and some sections of the building are already rewaxed and, and ready to go and, and working on the other classrooms and, and floors to, to get those in shape. So uh, things are coming together and uh, looking forward to an exciting week. Thank you. That's right. That's great. Yeah. Did she, yes, give, did she give her approval of, uh, of our bathrooms that are outside the classroom? She did. She did. So everything was uh, yes. still pathetic with that. Yep. And what's the name of the vendor that we're paying um, tonight? We're voting on uh, uh, the roofing company is MTD. They're a Neptune company, mm -hmm. a big company. They do a lot of work around the state. Uh, the work for Port Authority of Newark at the wow. uh, transit train uh, station up there. So uh, uh, they're making great progress, very conscientious, very, they're showing up every day, no problems. Wow. So, yeah. yeah right. No problems yet, so uh, we're happy. I could see the work at uh, Dow at Dow Elementary, and even with the, the dumpster out front, it was clean. <laughs> if you can imagine that, you know, removing roof material could get very, uh, very dirty. So they're doing a great job. Yes, we're we're excited. <laughs> great, thank you. All right, with that, we're going to move on to our um, action items, Mr. McCarthy. I'd like to present item six point one for discussion. Any questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, personnel, we will vote on that downstairs. We'll go into financial management and resource services. Mr. Weinstein? Um, yes, we have uh, one, 8.1 to 8.6 for, uh, for discussion. Is there anything, Jeff, that you wanted to kind of point out? Sure. We did receive a uh, notification from the funding for our non publics, uh, which is our first item there. Uh, that just came out last week. Uh, those amounts are uh, determined uh, per pupil basis. So uh, that's money that's funneled through the district back out uh, to these non-public schools. Uh, again, based on the per pupil times enrollment at those particular uh, schools. Uh, and uh, those uh, services uh, we uh, use MOESC for. So MOESC manages it because it's a very heavy uh, documentation and paper uh, lift to, to support those funds. Uh, so MOS scales that for us. Um, and then, uh, as I said, 8.4 is the uh, upgrade change order for the uh, extra conduit going under the field. Uh, and then we have uh, CUSAC coming next year. Uh, and one of the requirements is that we acknowledge our bus drills. Because we are a transporting district, we have to have two drills per year uh, for school. Uh, so those are on our agenda to uh, acknowledge. Anyone have any questions? Mr. Schneider? Oh, oh sorry. there were a, oh, 8.6. Everything on that? We don't have anything. Nothing. Nothing to report on that. Okay. Anyone have any questions, Mr. Schneider? Yeah, regarding 8.2, my question is, 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 that, is the contract there done, or are you asking for comments on the contract? I'm sorry, 8.2? Yes. And if you presented this in the prior board meeting, I apologize for giving comments. Um, so we have an athletic trainer that goes to all our events and, and uh, you know, is available. Uh, but sometimes uh, the schedule does not quite line up perfectly. So this is a company that is uh, recommended by the athletic director that we've used in the past uh, on the off chance that uh, our athletic trainer is not available, they would provide a certified uh, trainer to attend our events. Yeah, my, my questions were more around like the 90 day hours, 40% of that from the 15 day payments after I think it was just email, it seems to be pretty one sided, you know, from a negotiation standpoint. That's why it was not a stone deal. Yeah, I mean, this is the standard contract we've used, but then. A lot of these folks have those just as standards based on uh, clientele they deal with. But so we work with them uh, on the payment status, and um, I think we used them maybe once last year. No, for, no, 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 just for an emergency situation. For an emergency situation. Gotcha. Thank you. Ms. Gilman, are they really located in Florida? A corporate headquarters in Florida, corporate. incorporated in Florida. But they're local. Yes. Yeah, the courts are getting uh, dispute we have to go down. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone Are else? You volunteering for that? I wouldn't. 
Any other questions for finance? All right, we will move on to instruction. Ms. Gilman. Yes, Madam President, we have two items for discussion and we will, we've already discussed 9.1, leave that to Ms. Weldon and 9.2. Yes, um, annually the, the school district, each school district is required to uh, prepare a remote instruction plan should the need arise. Um, this is something that began during the COVID years and, and continue. So we have made some updates to that. Uh, we are not following um, a few of the items that were in the past report uh, because we're back from COVID and we're here full time. But should we have to go into a remote uh, situation, schooling situation again, that plan is in place so that we are ready and prepared should we have to go remote. Cautionary report that we submit to the state each summer. Anyone have any questions? Let's hope we don't need it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, planning construction, there is no report, so we will move on to policy. Ms. Gilman? Yes, certainly. Uh, this is a discussion of the second reading uh, of revised or policies which have been abolished and regulations. Uh, just wondering if there is any follow-up about the remote public board meetings. Did you, I know we were just kind of waiting on things. I'm guessing the state hasn't really moved right, on so yet. No, there's been no movement from the state or uh, information from the attorney uh, regarding that. But again, that is based on a law that was set up so the entire board can conduct a meeting remotely. So that there was no physical location of the meeting. Uh, that's what's really being uh, discontinued based on the expiration of the emergency law. Can you explain that? So it's abolished for what we have now, but in place is that we can conduct a remote meeting in case of a pandemic or whatever. So when COVID hit, they issued an emergency order, emergency regulation, mm -hmm. allowing districts to continue to conduct business remotely. So it would sort of waive the necessity of having a physical location for the public to come to, to you know, participate in the meeting. Um, that uh, emergency order expired. Uh, so Strauss has made said because that emergency order expired, this uh, regulation, this policy that we put in place based on that should also be abolished. And that does not mean that uh, we can't have board members participate remotely. Well, that's the part that re remains in right. question. And that's the part we don't have any new guidance on from our attorney. But we have a separate policy for board members to participate remotely in an emergent situation. Right, they, are. they are. So this, in re, you know, this was our discussion last time that we were hoping to get some guidance. So maybe we could also present that. We did not get it. We did not, we do not have an update on that part of the conversation. But this part of the conversation is that this policy that they're recommending we abolish, there's nothing in there that should stop us right now from abolishing it because it is the guidance and that executive order is ex has expired. So we may vote on that. So we should vote on this, the recommendation to abolish, and we will continue to follow up with our attorney on guidance on the rest. And Strauss that night was following up as well with the state for more clear guidance around that other question that you're talking about, hybrid type meeting. Right. Anyone have any questions regarding the policies? I don't know, John, whatever you read. Oh, 40, uh, 140, 140. No, I just have one more I want to note that fun. we did pull the volunteer coaches policy. We had it on last time mm -hmm. for first reading. Um, Mrs. McGovern brought up to me some questions. I spoke also with the athletic director. And in reading it, we may want to make some revisions. So we just felt the best thing to do would be to pull it. Let us make the re suggest the revisions that we think are best, and then we'll put it back on for two readings. Okay. okay? <clears throat> so that one is missing compared to the last meeting. All right. Thank you. Okay. Right now, I'm going to ask the board if there's any old business. So any new business? No. Okay. Oh, Ms. Gilman, back to old business. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank our fellow board members. It was very difficult. Well, we had to revise our budget. But if you checked the school updates, those clips that we get, Tom's River and Jackson 
are in dire straits. They had their budget forced upon them. Uh, cuts have to be made, very serious cuts. And as much as we resented the way the state presented it to us of the way we had to foist it on the taxpayers and of Ocean Township, we worked as best we could with our administration to come up with the best. And I can only thank Thank you, board members, that we're not in the kind of predicament that those school districts are in. Who knows what's going to happen? The state, they, they, now they are going to sue the state, and, and who knows where it's going to end. So it was repugnant to many of us, but uh, we're safe. And we're starting our year off very strongly. Thank you, Ms. Gilman. Is there any new business? We'll ask again? No? Okay. Um, Right now, I'd like to ask if there's any public comment. Um, Mrs. Uh, Conway, is there any anyone in the queue? Or anyone downstairs? Good evening. Good evening, Madam President. There is nobody in person, but we do have one commenter uh, virtually, Alex Hayes. Please go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, sorry. Um, it seems like the settings are a little different. Sorry about that. Um, well, well, sure, let's get excited about the lights, um, the brand new lights for the football stadium. That's fantastic and all, but that's not the highlight for me tonight. The highlight is definitely about um, the data that you presented about the HIBs and the, um, the police reporting and the uh, safety considerations. Um, as I've said before over many years, it's all in how you report the data and what you choose to talk about. Okay, sure, there were less incidents this year compared to last in some of the columns. What I don't see anybody talking about, sadly, is the percentages um, that were affirmed HIBs actually went up. Like if you look, for example, um, the high school um, reported HIBs went down, but the actual confirmed HIBs number went up. It was 25% of all reported HIBs last year, it turned out to be HIBs, um, and this year it was 66%. Um, so I, I think, when you are presenting data like this, as always, the context has to be a little bit more clear and historical data um, has to be a little bit more apparent. There also was a rise in racial incidents and religion inc incidents, but I see nobody talking about that tonight. Um, from this year uh, versus last year, you know, there were greater violence incidents. Nobody really harped on that. Um, from what I heard, uh, well, who was it, John, who said, I think we're getting in front of things. And Mr. McCarthy, I, I humbly disagree. And I think a lot of parents who have kids at the middle and high school would absolutely agree that while we are acknowledging there is a problem, it doesn't seem like there is much being done. Physical, actual, concrete plans. Um, one of my questions, since I know Superintendent Weldon, you do want me to be a little bit, and I'll be better about making sure I'm actually asking questions, so hopefully I can get follow-ups on it, is it would be nice to know how many of the 30 that were in that data column, that second page, how many are assaults, how many are sexual assaults, um, how many are threats, um, you know, to just say 30 is a little um, misleading or, or a little hard to tell what we're looking at. Um, I'd also like to know, uh, when can we find out what schools these numbers are in, in those, that reporting category? Um, and quite honestly, I know somebody brought up substance abuse. That doesn't really jump out at me that much. I'm more concerned with the assaults, the weapons, sexual assaults, frankly, the religion and racial incidents at our schools. Um, Ms. Walden said, we need to do more, we want to do more. And I said, sure, nobody, nobody would disagree with that. But we really need to know what is going to be done. Here's a concrete plan. Um, working on interventions is great, but where is the data on behavioral interventions? You've had it for now over a year, the tiered interventions. It would be nice to see some specific data. Um, okay, so that was part of my comment slash question. My other thing I wanted to bring up, um, there's been some chatter this afternoon about the NJ.com posting about the US News and World Report. Our previous superintendent used to like rankings when they benefited our district and made us look great. And then when they made us look not so great, of course, rankings suck and that are the worst thing and who cares about rankings. So taking that with a grain of salt, because I know rankings can be viewed or skewed however you want. Um, after every assessment, after 
every reporting of scores and results. Um, we always say, well, here's, you know, we're going to take a look at things and then we're going to do something about it. And for six years now, I've been asking, okay, so what are we going to do about it? How are we going to make this better? How are we going to make our schools more equitable for all learners? How are we specifically going to bring our rankings up? Because the argument that rankings don't matter does not fly when parents are trying to move to this town, parents are trying to convince themselves to keep their kids in our public schools and not go to private, quite frankly, because that is happening a lot in many homes um, in eighth through 12th grade, especially in the township of Ocean. And how are we going to hold people accountable who really are either, you know, there are some, I'm sure there's some people who aren't performing to our standards or not teaching the way data shows that kids need to be taught. So I'd like to know if there's any response from the superintendent and or the board about the NJ.com story. And I'm sorry, I buried the lead. I forgot to say that story said out of 27 high schools in this county, uh, OTHS is number 24. So we went from a blue ribbon school not too long ago to number 24 out of 27 public high schools. Um, you know, I'm sure you guys will say thanks for your comment next but um, it would be nice to have a detailed plan, a specific uh, communication out to parents and taxpayers about how are we gonna set our students up to perform better uh, for career, academics, life success. Um, I don't think 24 out of 27 is any way acceptable. And if the school board members sitting there tonight are not asking these questions, that's, that's a big shame. Um, I have a few other questions that I might say. Yeah, Ms. Chase, unfortunately, the five minute time. Well, is of, course, of course, yes. But My five minutes are, are always up, but others might be able to speak well, later. You can, Go always, ahead. you can always ask more questions um, during regular. Thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Conway, is there anyone else? No, Madam President, there are no further commenters. All right, thank you. Um, may I please have a motion to adjourn the workshop? Second. A second. All right. See you all downstairs. Okay.